everybody. Welcome. We are so pleased to see so many of you today uh, to talk about the Physiopedia Artificial Intelligence Assistant launch. All right, so I'd like to take a moment now to introduce you to Rachel and Tony Lowe, as well as Tarina Vanderschock, who's joining us today. So Rachel and Tony are the co-founders of Physiopedia and Physiopedia Plus. Rachel is a physiotherapist and early adopter of technology. She's combined her clinical expertise with her drive to make rehabilitation knowledge accessible to everyone. The result is an online learning platform known as Physiopedia Plus, or just simply Plus, which promotes continuing education and professional development for rehabilitation professionals around the world. Tony has a background in engineering and education, and he's played such an important role in building the robust infrastructure of these platforms. So his innovative thinking has helped Plus to be a reliable, user-friendly, and knowledge-sharing platform for anyone who wants to learn. We also have Tarina with us today, and she is a dedicated physiotherapist from South Africa, currently living in the United States. Tarina has earned a doctorate in physical therapy from the University of St. Augustine, specializing in education. Tarina is the education director for PLUS and oversees the course development work, accreditation, and facilitates the online evidence-based learning offered on the PLUS platform. So as you can see, PLUS is led by a strong, passionate team of professionals who are invested in your learning. So we're thrilled to have Rachel, Tony, and Tarina with us today. So thanks you, thank you all for being here and to talk to us about such an exciting new capability, the Physiopedia AI Assistant offered by PLUS. So I'm going to turn it over to Rachel now to start the presentation and welcome Rachel. Thank you very much, Amanda. Um, so thank you for that great introduction. Um, hello, everybody. It's uh, I'm very excited to be here today. I'm absolutely thrilled that so many of you are joining us for this launch of the Physiopedia AI Assistant. So new artificial intelligence technologies have really been sprung upon us, you know, in the last year. Um, it's a sector that's moving very, very quickly. Now, with other things, they come and go. But I think with AI, this is not a fad. AI, artificial intelligence, is here to stay. And this is going to really influence our lives going forwards. We will all, and as we can see by the poll, many of you have are already using AI, but we will all be using AI, whether we realize it or not, in the next couple of years, in our personal lives and in our professional lives. Now, historically, physiotherapists, and I can't speak for our other healthcare or rehabilitation colleagues, but as a physiotherapist, I've seen that we have been very slow in the past to adopt new technologies. Um, this time now, it really isn't a time to be cautious. This really is a time to jump on board and ride with this wave. It, it's, you know, it's moving quickly and it's and it's going to be bumpy. We have to get involved now if we really want AI, if we want to influence how a artificial intelligence shapes the future of our profession. We need to ensure that our professional practice is valued and enhanced. We need to make sure that we do not become obsolete as practicing healthcare professionals. Um, so today represents Physiopedia's first step into that journey. Physiopedia launched in 2009, um, and we extended that knowledge sharing resource with Physiopedia Plus in 2015. Now it's nearly 10 years later, and we're launching the Physiopedia AI Assistant with you all today. Um, this is the new intelligent clinical support tool that we have made are making available. So as Tarina, sorry, as Amanda mentioned, uh, today I'm joined by Tarina and Tony. Tarina will talk about how the AI development journey has been to today. And Tarina will talk, give us a demonstration of the AI assistant in action. So without further ado, that's it from me for now. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tony to take the presentation forward. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Tony. I'm really not used to being in these kind of webinars. So forgive me if I look a little bit uncomfortable. I know my colleagues and the team spend a lot more time doing this. Um, but it really is amazing to see so many people with us here today and from an awful, uh, an awful, a large range of, of backgrounds and professions. So I'm just watching these introductions and it, it amazes me. 
Um, so today I'm going to talk about the path we have taken to develop this Physiopedia AI assistant that we, I'm so excited that we'll be launching today. So I'm the head of a small tech team at Physiopedia. And one of our key roles is really staying on top of the latest developments in all digital technologies. So we see things like the blockchain and crypto and NFTs. We see all these things come and we're always looking at these things to see if there are ways and opportunities that we can use these to innovate, to improve and expand the services that we deliver here at Physiopedia to support the knowledge and the education of physiotherapists all over the world. Now, a lot of these um, don't immediately have applications, but we've been watching artificial intelligence for a long time, and it's always seemed like a very distant possibility that we might actively use artificial intelligence with what we do here at Physiopedia. It was very exciting still, but it seemed much better at beating grandmasters at chess or identifying a cat in a photograph. And so these things didn't seem to be directly relevant to our uh, users and what we are trying to do as an organization. Now, that all changed, as we all know, in November 2022, when an organization that none of us had heard of prior to that date, or most of us anyway, uh, a company called OpenAI latched, launched something called ChatGBT. So we obviously, like many of you, started to play with it very early on, and it was like a light bulb going off. It was like, oh, okay, artificial intelligence is suddenly starting to make sense now. Suddenly, we can see there is huge potential here, and it can be applied to so many areas, but it could be applied to knowledge and education and clinical practice in, in physiotherapy, OT, rehabilitation. So from that point, we've been following the developments related to artificial intelligence and large language models very closely. Then about a year ago, we started to see the building blocks, the toolkits that were going to allow us to build and implement our own artificial intelligence, our own AI assistant. So it was a, about a year ago that we were really able to start this journey process in earnest. So as we embarked on developing this Physiopedia AI assistant, we were very clear that we had one very important goal in mind, very important goal for our user community, and that is trust. So at the moment, we have many people who use Physiopedia and Physiopedia Plus every day. And a key part of that is the fact that they know they can trust our content. So if we're going to develop an AI assistant, we absolutely have to be clear that we can be sure that they can trust what this artificial intelligent assistant is going to be doing for them. So for us and this AI assistant, this trust is really related to two key areas. One is the, is the responses that the AI generates, a problem that these AI tools have been demonstrating in the past is hallucinations. That really isn't something that we can accept from an AI assistant for our user community. So these responses need to be relevant, they need to be professional, they need to be factually correct. And key, obviously, for our user community is they need to promote evidence-based best practices. So that was one of the key objectives we were pursuing throughout this development process. The other one is we need to be able to be trusted in the way that we store and use all the related data that this AI assistant is going to involve. And in particular, that relates to the questions that our users ask the AI and the responses that they achieve. So trust has been the key consideration that we have borne in mind throughout our development process, and it influences all the design, design decisions that we've taken and will continue to take in the future. So to build this Physiopedia AI assistant, we have used what is quite standard in software development, an iterative process. And that started with a very simple working prototype. But then what we have then been able to do is put this prototype through countless cycles of rigorous testing and improvement. And here we've really benefited from the fact that we have a large team of highly qualified 
and engaged rehabilitation professionals. I, I represent a very much a minority in this organization in that I am not a physiotherapist, I am not an OT. So we have, we have within our team, people from the different professions in rehab, they come from a wide variety of countries, a wide variety of cultures, they speak a variety of languages. And that has really allowed us to test this assistant from a lot of different perspectives and really give it a thorough and vigorous workout. That, so we've managed to iron out most of the problems so far that we found. And that allows me to be very confident in the assistant that we are launching today. I have to say I'm amazed by the progress that we've made. Not so long ago, this seemed like this day might be quite a long way off, but it's actually come a lot faster than I anticipated. And I'm extremely grateful for the other members of uh, my small tech team, Greg, Grace and Jorge. Grace is joining us today on a birthday for this launch. Big shout out to Grace um, for making this possible. Without them, we could not have got to this point today. And we're also really aware that this version of the AI Assistant is, the, is very much the beginning of this journey that we are now taking. And so we have a lot of interesting ideas about how we will develop this in the future, some of which we've already put into development. So I'm thrilled about the Physiopedia AI Assistant we're launching today. I should note it keeps surprising us with what it can do as we continue to explore that. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Rina, who is going to guide you through some examples of how this assistant can be used to, to support your clinical practice, to support your education and, and learning. Thank you. Hi, I'm just quickly getting my setup ready to share. Hi, everyone. I'm reading your notes and I'm as excited as you about this launch. I get to show you a little bit around. So today is not about how to write the prompts. We will have webinars on that that you'll see in a bit. Today is about just showcasing different ways you can use this, which I'm really excited about. And we want you to go and play and find different use cases for this and see how you can use it. So you have to be logged in to see this. So you log into your Plus account or through your organization into the Plus account, and it will be viewable at the bottom right of your screen. You will see the Physiopedia AI Assistant. So when you click on that, oh, let me do that. When you open it for the first time, there will be a disclaimer that pops up. And please read through that and understand how AI works. There's again a disclaimer when you open this and it will say the Physiopedia AI assistant can make mistakes, double check important information. Remember, you are the trained therapist and you need to check the information, but we want to make it as easy for you to verify the information and I'll show you how. Let's start with one example. Um, you might haven't seen a shoulder patient in a while and you think your patient might have a shoulder impingement and you just want to know what is the best test to do for a shoulder impingement. So I type that in and pop it up. Um, and it will say there is no single test for shoulder impingement, but there is a combination of tests that you can do and it will go through and give you different um, examples of tests and what to look out for. But then what I really, really love, and thank you for including this, Tony and the team, is the sources at the bottom. It is all from, like, uh, because it's from Physiopedia pages and our trusted content, we can give you the sources where it comes from. And this is something that is really unique. And what I also like is it tells you a quick summary of where that information or what information is on that page that relates to this question. Um, so use that to verify your information, to check further content, but we'll go through that. So now I look at the answers and I'm like, oh, I know a bunch of these tests, but maybe I don't know all of them. So what you could say, is how should I perform a test? So typing that in, how should I perform the Hawkins-Kennedy test? And that's a quick question and you can ask that about any, any test available and it will tell you the positions and here it even gives you the specific, specificity for this, for this test and then also where you can find it. Remember, 
clicking on this source will then take you to the page which will give further information including videos about the test and how to do that um, so I also thought about what about education can this AI assistant help me with education I can give to this patient so if the cluster of tests are positive for impingement what education should I give my patient and we're waiting for that um, and there's a couple of education things you can add avoid lifting heavy objects or overhead activities um, and then you can also look at the pages involved now we want to move to maybe another topic and this is something i want to show you if you're moving from shoulder to a completely different topic there is an option to go to new chat it is developed in such a way that the focus would be on the shoulder now so if i say give me the anatomy of the acl it would tell you we are busy with the shoulder okay so i want you then to go to new chat and start a brand new chat with what you're doing so i forgot about the acl anatomy please remind me and it can go into detail in there going through that and then for anatomy I would really recommend go to the page itself and go view the images look at the videos um, read up a little bit more um, but this is a very quick start if you just wanted a very quick summary to just have a reminder so now you think oh maybe my patient has an ACL injury what do I test for so I'm keeping it very simple today. Um, just how do I test for, for the ACL or the, if the ACL is injured? And it will give me different tests. Again, things to look at. Um, and I'm repeating kind of the previous question I had, but what if I don't know how to do the Lachman test? I can put that in there. And it will describe the position and showing um, again showing me where to go if I wanted to read up more so moving on from that and this is what I really like is now we've identified it but I need some advice on where to start please give a week one to two ACL rehab program and remember, this is a guideline. You are the professional. So use this as a guide to where to start. But it, it's really awesome in breaking it down. I even love the bold um, and, the, and the pointer and, and the um, one, two, three. So you can go through that. Um, you need to use your clinical judgment for your patient. This is just an idea of something you can use. So it will go through progression criteria, with a note at the bottom and then again links that you can go to for that okay this weekend i was involved in teaching students about agility tests so for me i would think start a new chat and we made them in the texas heat run around and doing agility tests so are the agility tests like the t-test and the illinois agility test reliable um, so that's an important question. So it will go through the inter the high, the reliability, giving you some information there, and then also um, articles that's mentioned. Someone asked about references, so it can give you the articles mentioned in those sources and what studies were done on that. And again, you can go find on the Physiopedia pages more information. Let's talk about another use case. You're an educator. And so a lot of our universities use Physiopedia pages and you want to test the knowledge of your students after reading these Physiopedia pages. So I made an example. My students have to read the infant development and prone Physiopedia page. Please give me three multiple choice quiz questions and indicate the correct answer. So wait for this. I love this. It makes life easy. As an educator, you need to go check these answers. Um, don't just trust it, but you can go to the Physiopedia page and check it. So it will give you a multiple choice question if you ask for multiple choice, as well as the correct answer in there. And then the page, and there's other pages that it 
may mention. Um, so another use case that I'm not going to show, but that you can play around with is that you can um, ask it for a case-based question. And I know that some of the people have really been, it's really struggling as an educator to come up with different cases. So you can use this to create a case-based question or a case study in that sense. So go play around with that. It is awesome. Let's think about other scenarios. Um, again, a new chat for this one. What is the most effective way to communicate with my patient? And this might feel very generic, but I think we all need reminders sometime, um, especially if you're struggling in the clinic. And this will give you pointers from all the, communi all the communication pages on Physiopedia um, about the best communication. And then you can go read about effective communication techniques. So... Another question is you might be in a leadership position or in management. And is this, will this help you? I think so. I'm about to do an annual review with my staff member. What should I ask them? And if you're in this position for the first time, then this will be great for you. This is a great way to start and look into what might be things to look at if this is your first time doing this. Um, during this meeting, your colleague might mention, or your staff member might mention that they've got an issue with one of the colleagues that might be accusing them of something or they're having conflict. And so you can continue this conversation to say, what is the best way to lead my team member in solving conflict with a colleague. And so this just shows you, you don't have to stick to anatomy and tests. You can look at other ways that you need um, this, this AI assistance. So this can do like encourage open communication, focus on the issue, identify the root cause. So you can read through that um, and then look at different options like developing a high performance team, different pages that might be available for you. Okay, let's get to the last scenario that I'm going to mention now is the World Physio Conference Congress is coming up next year in Japan. I need to write a conference, conference abstract. Can you help me with pointers on where to start? I think a lot of us struggle with that. And so let's see what the answers are. It will take you through different steps regarding your research. Choose the conference. Is this the right conference for you? Writing the abstract. And then you can ask deeper questions. Give me pointers on what do I need to put in the abstract? Um, there's some information about the title. So now you get accepted for this conference and you get asked to do a poster. So. It's always difficult. If I get accepted, how do I create a poster? And let's wait for this answer. Okay, before designing the poster, there are some things to think about. Things to think about when you design your poster, um, conceptualize the poster, and then submitting the poster. So my idea for today was just to show you different use cases. There will be more opportunities in the future where we can go into depth, but I hope after this, you have an idea of just what you can do to start playing with it. Thank you, everyone. I'm handing back to you, Rachel. Thank you very much, Tarina. Thank you for that demonstration. Um, lovely to see the Physiopedia AI Assistant in action today. Now, as with any um, AI chatbot. It is very similar to ChatGPT. The difference with this is that it is trained on Physiopedia content. Now, no other um, AI chatbots should really be using that Physiopedia content. So this is this is the unique thing about this that it's using our trusted Physiopedia content that many people around the world use already. Um, it will be available. So the AI assistant is available now in Physiopedia Plus. Um, anyone with a full or pro member account has access now and anyone with a trial account has access for a week. So if you want to have a play with this, please just sign up for a trial account and you have access for a week to have a play with this. 
no strings attached. Um, as with any using any of these chatbots in our professional practice, you know, it's really important to remember the key things like we don't share patient information in these in these conversations with the AI assistant. Treat it as you would when you were talking to a mentor or peer at peer. Any of those questions that you have, you know, ask it those questions, ask it follow up questions, ask it to clarify and give you more detail um, to help improve the answers that you're getting from it. Um, and so hopefully you'll all be able to have access to this and you'll all enjoy using it. If you find some oddities about it, which there will be, we admit, then please let us know. All we want to do now is improve this so that this becomes a really useful tool, trusted tool for clinical practice and anything related to our professional practice around the world. This is the very beginning. So we're what we're launching today is very much version one of the Physiopedia AI Assistant. We all know that this domain of artificial intelligence is developing and moving forwards at an exponential rate. And I think we know that we're going to look back probably within a year at this version of the, a of the Physiopedia AI Assistant. And we're going to be embarrassed by its simplicity and its limited abilities. We're already looking at the countless opportunities for how we can improve and increase the usefulness of this tool for all of us to support rehabilitation professionals and other healthcare professionals in to work more efficiently, more effectively to benefit the well-being of our patients. So we're thinking the things we're considering about for the future. Um, we need we would like to in, to interact with this in multiple languages. We'd like to move it forward so that it's giving image and video based responses on as well as the text. And so that we can integrate it more into working practices. Maybe we'll be able to get it to generate exercise programs for us. Um, so to complement what we're doing here today, we have a series of webinars lined up. So on the 25th of June, Michael Rowe will be doing a webinar, Making Sense of Generative AI in Physiotherapy. So if you would like to learn more about AI within physiotherapy, join that webinar. On the 29th of July, Tarina and Amanda, who are here with us today, will be using our monthly Physiopedia Plus open meeting to again demonstrate the Physiopedia AI Assistant. But they'll also be joined by Jason Giesbrecht, who will give expert guidance on prompting for writing for generative AI. And then in the autumn this year, we're looking forward to doing our annual MOOC on AI in rehabilitation. So stay tuned for all, more information about that. So to conclude our presentation today, before we open up to all your questions, and I've seen that there are many that we can delve into, um, a few months ago, what we are doing to do today really did feel impossible. Um, now it just simply feels necessary, uh, and we're all really quite excited for what's going to be possible in the future. 